Let's get with the last video in our article talking about how yoga blocks can work in relation to the core, right? This is my favorite one, and this is one that I use all the time, both in terms of coaching uh, people through like therapeutic exercise as well as just badass ab circuits. So let's say we have somebody new that just, you know, one of the first things that we're going to do with them is we're just going to teach them to uh, contract their abs. And so I might teach them, I might have them just doing breathing stuff first where we're working on filling the ribs laterally with air, filling the belly with air, expanding, and then collapsing. Then I can add forced breathing where I take a deep breath in and I blow out and I tighten. For a lot of people though, you know, they, they don't get the concept of that. They can't feel that per se. So what I can, what I can do is I can put the block between my knees and I can say, okay, so you're going to take a deep breath in, your blow out, and I want you to squeeze the block as hard as you can. Then immediately, you know, they're like, okay, yes, I can feel my lower abs now. Deep breath in and squeeze. Or let's say I have a client that needs help kind of learning the concept of stiffening their shoulders. I can do the same thing up here. Deep breath in, blow out, crush the block, squeeze your lats. Okay, so it, it gives some awareness. But then as we start to expand out into core training, or, you know, we can do things where we're squeezing the block between our knees. Deep breath in, blow out. to really keep the core tight. So for me, like, if I get out to a certain point here and my back arches, okay, it's because I, I lack the ability to generate tension at those ranges. So then I'm squeezing the block. It's giving me kind of a kickstand to do just that. So we might do something like that, or we could take it, we can extend the legs, and we could do things like pulling behind the head while staying tense. I can also squeeze the block between my knees and be holding another one, you know, to do halos. Let's say we come into a side plank position, which is commonly an issue uh, for people that have, you know, the people that have poor control. Let's say oftentimes when people are doing a side plank, I'll, hold, I'll raise up and they'll be like, oh, I feel my shoulder collapse. Okay, so what I can have them do, take the block, squeeze the block as hard as they can, all right, stiffen the shoulder, squeeze the block with the other hand as well. Can you feel that in your abs? Yes. Raise it up. Okay, so now the block is kind of acting as feedback mechanism. Suddenly they're able to generate tension here and here. Okay, so we have good core control. So again, another good tool um, to make that happen. In a plank position, what I'll typically do or is kind of change it up, right? So if we have, um, we have somebody new and they're holding a plank, what I like to do is I'll, I'll either put the block between the knees, which you know I showed you the dead bug, or I'll have them stiffen the shoulders by holding the block between the hands. So we come into a plank position here. And then we can kind of add to that by putting the block between the knees, rocking back and forth, or even doing things where I'm stiffening and I'm just targeting one oblique because as I'm, as I'm pushing into this side, I'm getting more compression on one side. I'm generating more pressure here. So like if I have a weak abdominal on one side, kind of doing this, giving it a little bit more pressure is a good way to just go about squeezing. All right, we can do the same thing in a dead bug position by again, squeezing in one hand and extending out so I can really feel the oblique on that particular side doing work and turning on.